Hello, welcome back to Compiler Hacking. I've uh, been hard at work the last few days. I have not been able to make any videos because of some family obligations. I just didn't have time to sit down at the desk and, and record, but I did have my laptop out a few different times and was able to hack on our compiler project. And so if you've been following along, you know that we've been working on compiling our compiler. We have a Ruby compiler that runs uh, under MRI Ruby, Matz's Ruby interpreter, but it'd be really cool if we could compile that uh, using itself. And that's what we've been working on. And I've, uh, I'm getting closer. We're getting really close. Uh, so I'm just going to go over real quickly what I've been working on uh, outside of videos. So you kind of are caught up if you're following along at home. And uh, so yeah, we'll get right into it. So I added kernel enum4, which takes a uh, Ruby method that um, yields to a block and it turns it into an enumerator. So that's a real big help and will help us uh, going forward as well. Uh, dir each child lists a directory, hash map empty, um, array min and max, a lot of little methods, string end with, string strip, uh, do, 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 what else? And then uh, we were able to get pass four of the compiler, which is the final pass to compile, which is a huge milestone and is uh, just a, a relief and a weight off my shoulders. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, backticks. We can now run an external child process with backticks and get the output, which is huge and a, a critical part of how our language uh, works with the back end being GCC or Clang, and it has to shell out to that. So that's a, a big thing. Um, and that's it. So uh, a lot of little things here and there. And we've been, we've been making really great progress, and I appreciate your encouragement. And so tonight, uh, I'm going to work on something special really cool i think uh this this i'm excited about this i hope this works and let's just make sure we're clean here go ahead and make that and uh, i'll show you the the major missing piece the glue code that glues everything together uh which requires natalie uh and natalie being um the compiler the parser and the repl and this script here glues it all together uh, we're not going to write, we're not going to get this to compile tonight because we need option parser, but I'm going to just cheat a little bit and we're going to rewrite a much smaller, simpler version of this, uh, so that we can see if we can self host, if we can get Natalie to run, um, some version of Natalie that can run the Fibonacci example code, which is Fibonacci, uh, which is this very simple script. And so what we'd like to do is use our parser that we've been writing. So this is the culmination of many, many months of work. Use the parser we've been writing to parse this. Use the compiler that uh, you know we've been writing for a year, um, compiled with that compiler <laughs> to compiled AST. So this is now two levels deep. Have you watched Inception? It's a great movie. I uh, love, love that movie, but this is what this feels like a little bit. Uh, and then to run the, the resulting, oh, and then feed that through GCC and run the resulting binary. So, oh, this is, this is gonna be fantastic if we can get it to work. And we may fail spectacularly. So let's see what happens. Um, so right off, I'm gonna we're gonna start rewriting this script as a little smaller baby version of it. Um, so we'll just call it Nat instead of Natalie. It's the baby version of of Natalie. So we're gonna call it Nat, and we're gonna put this up here. And we I guess we do need temp file. We don't need that. We don't have bundler in Natalie, so we can't do that. But we do have this require uh, compiler. Yeah, just compiler. And let's. Uh, set the file type to Ruby so that looks right. Uh, and then what? So we're not gonna do any option parts for stuff. So let's just say it takes a path from the argv.first and does what? What does it do? Let's go down here, skip all the option stuff. Um, compile and run. I think this is I think this is the code we want to do or at least some stripped down version oh boy some stripped down version of it so we're going to create a temporary file uh, with a prefix of natalie and we're going to immediately close it because we just want the file name 
Um, we need a compiler instance. So I believe that's compiler.new uh, compiler RB. What does it take? What does it take? Uh, it takes an AST and a path. Okay, so AST and the path. We already have the path. The AST is going to be parser.parse uh, uh, file.read path, like so. So we're going to take our parser and turn it into an AST. We're going to feed that into our compiler. And then we're going to write it to the temporary file path. Um, yeah, we're going to compile it and write it to that. And then we're, we don't have spawn yet, so we're going to have to not use any of that. So we just, we'll just do it with backticks, because that's the only way we have right now to spawn a child process. But um, let's not do that yet, though. Let's just print the path puts. <sighs> okay, so there's going to be something not work with this, I'm sure. Um, but here's what we're going to do. We're run Natalie, and we're going to give it the little baby nat script to run. And as an argument to that, we're going to pass the Fibonacci code and let it do its thing. It's not fast. Uninitialized constant compiler. Uh, that's because this is in the name space of Natalie. I'll run that again. Yeah. Okay, undefined method exist for file. Okay, check build. Okay, so we need to go implement something. File.rb. We have a file. Self.exist path. And we're going to do some inline code here. Oh my. Let me just make sure I'm doing that right. You need to this require. So, what is the inline code going to be? We need to look up. Um, I think you would do that with a stat, display fire file, oh no, man, stat three, uh, two. I never can remember the syntax for looking up C stuff. There we go. Uh, stat path name and then a pointer to this status buff, stat buff thing. I haven't done this in a while, so hopefully I can figure this out. I love it when man pages have example code that I can copy, but oh, look at that. Okay, so I suppose I need this one at the very least. Um, I may need some of the rest, I don't know. We'll just see what the compiler says. Uh, struct stat SB, we'll need that for sure. Auto path equals args zero. And we'll do path assert type and the type, uh, let's see, value type string. And um, I probably don't even need that. So what do we do here? Boop, 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 boop. Uh, L stat? Okay, what is L stat? What does L stat do? L stat is identical to stat, except that if the path name is a symbolic link, then it returns information about the link itself, not the file. Okay, we don't want that. So I think we do want stat. Uh, down here, where's my example? There it is. Um, it's going to be something like that. Ah. Uh, but not LSTAT. We're going to do that. And um, path as string C stir. And this is the stat. I don't know why they call it SB. That's fine. 
if it's a negative one, then I think we have a little shortcut for this. Raise error no. Yeah. Raise error no. I assume that it sets air no, air number. It doesn't. Yes, it does. Uh, yeah. So we'll just call that if there's an error. If not, then let's, uh, oh, what, uh, what do we need out of it? Oh, we don't need anything out of it. I assume if it exists, then we get, actually, that's all we need right there. Return if, if it's negative one, return in the false object else then it's a true object. Yeah, we don't actually need this stat stuff. I should have made a test for this. Um, file test. Scribe. Uh, dot exist. It returns true if the file exists. <laughs> if the path exists. So file exists. Um, dir should be true. And file should be true. And um, that should be false. Uh, should not exist. So let's just make sure that works. Snelly file test does. Ben Nelly. Uh, it, are you as suspicious as I am that that worked the first time? Okay, it worked the first time. Look at that. So it works on files and directories. Boom, let's commit it. Yes. Uh, I don't like that there's two lines here though. Yes and yes. Add file.exist method. Okay, now let's do our NAT thing again. What else is missing? Undefined square brackets. Okay, 261 uh, of which file? Yeah, 261. Uh, macro node. Okay, so something tells me that uh, this only works. Yeah, interesting. So I thought this was going to be a uh, like a regular node, like a sexp, and I could use these array subscripts on it. But sometimes it's a symbol, and it only works because Ruby lets you subscript um, access, like slice a symbol into a string. I don't even care to implement that, right? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, oops, I'm just going to. Um, oh goodness, what line was that? Two sixty one. I'm just gonna say return false. Uh, unless node is a sex because that's what I probably what I should have done anyway and let's see what that does undefined matcher for nil 189 um, 
I don't believe you can do nil foo, can you? You can. You can pass nil, or you can pass the matcher to a nil? No way. Nil.methods minus object.new.methods. Wild. Nil.method owner. Nil class has that method. Does object have that method? Yeah, it's on kernel. Wild. So if I say object.new, does it match this? Interesting. Okay, well, um, I didn't know this. So nil value has has that method. Uh, is it just called match? Binding gen match. Uh huh. Regex match. E eq tilde. Okay, eq tilde. We need this method for nil value. Uh, we'll just put it right here. And nil value CPP, it's going to return false always. Or nil. What is it going to return? It's going to return nil. Um, fair enough. Don't care about the value. Return env nil obj. Binding gen nil. Uh huh. Nil class nil value. One argument past the environment, no blocks, and returns a value. Okay. Make. Nil value eq tilde. What did I do wrong? Oh, right here. Okay. Uh huh. Why didn't I write a test for this? I'm getting I'm getting so excited about this stuff that um I'm not I'm getting out of out of habits. Uh it always returns nil. Hmm. Nil foo. Um should be nil. Make and Nelly test, Nelly nil test. Okay, I believe that that works. EQ tilde, no, not that yet. EQ tilde, yep, yep, yep. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Add method on nil class. Let's add that other thing that we fixed. Don't subscript. Uh, don't ch check for uh, check for macro on symbols on non sexp uh, objects. Okay. Well, back to our little experiment.
What else is missing? And if I method strip for nil, I'm sensing a pattern here. No. That is some other book. Compiler RB. Nope. Compiler RB. Why can't I type? Uh, what line? 71. Stood error dot puts out if out dot strip is not equal to that. Um, okay, let's put the command and then let's put out. We should see it print twice. Should see it print once for the parent process, once for the compiled version, and did I do a puts? I went to do a p here. Uh huh. It's an empty string. Fascinating. And let's uh, print the exit status of that command. It is a zero status, that's good, but for some reason our backticks, the one we implemented, is returning a nil instead of an empty string. Interesting. So let's say we just run this. Um, we get no output and no error. Okay, what if I do whack.rb and I put this in backticks like so that's an empty string okay okay no, 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 that's a different thing. Okay, go back to here. Um, process RB. Natalie CPP. So we'll look at our implementation of the backticks and figure out what I did wrong. So I know I return a nil somewhere right here. Um, if there's no result from F gets, then we return a nil. But I thought that was right. So if I have IRB and I say um, which, uh, um, I don't know, what's a command at? That's going to print that. But if I say which what, it's an empty string. What if I just, um, maybe it never returns nil. I thought there was a timer return nil. Okay, well, that's easy. Uh, string value out. And this is going to be just an empty string. Okay. Um, oh, but I should have made a test. Make a test, make a test, make a test. Uh, string test. Back ticks. No, not string test. Uh, what am I thinking? I think it's shell test. Yeah. So if I say this, 
it returns an empty string if there is no output. Uh huh. S H C exit should equal empty string. Let's test that. Shell test. Okay, good. Let's commit that. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, don't return nil if back ticks. Let's see. If child uh, process produces no output. Okay. Uh, get rid of that. Okay, back to back to running our inception. There was an error compiling. This is new. Compiler RB72. Hmm. Well, what is puts, what is out? Okay, that's the top level. That's the second level. Hmm? Oh, it's not, uh, question mark is not equal to zero. Oh. Okay. So that's another error here. Um, this should equal zero and this should equal 10. Okay, Ruby, All right? No. Fascinating. So zero is a special case. A little confused. Undefined method status. What are, uh, let's do it this way. Uh, SHC exit 10. E equals that. Okay, so E is this methods minus E.2i is 2560. But exit status is 10. Okay, so this is the original value, but 2i is, yeah, 2i is the original value, and exit status is the um, bit shifted, uh, the the value that we all know and love. Um, ba, 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 ba. So that means over here, process status, nope, process RB, over here. Uh, we, hmm. I'm just going to kind of cheat. I don't know if this is the right way to do this, but it's how I'm going to do it. Uh, two I, and then Natalie CPP, uh, was already there. Uh, we're going to set this to um, 2560, okay, 2560. I'm just gonna put all the different ways that this should equal something. Okay, and this should just be the raw status, not bit shifted. Is Ruby happy? Yes. Is Natalie happy? Come on. Nope. Uh, should be equal to zero. Uh, 
Hmm. And I think that's like a, I think that's like a Ruby thing. That I'm not doing some sort of implicit conversion correctly. If other is a integer, this is cheating. 2i equals other. Actually, let's just do it this way. I don't think it has this method. I can check right here. Um, uh, methods, method uh, equal equal owner. Oh, it does have that method. Oh, yes. OK, so this is perfect. This is actually the correct way to do it. Yay. Uh-huh. 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 Store original status in process status and allow comparison with integer. OK. Run our experiment again. You can kind of see my my flow here. It's not too complicated. <gasps> it's an elf binary. Do I just do I run it? Do I run it? Do I run it? Okay, sorry, I'm not talking. Uh, I'm not talking. Well, I'm supposed to be talking. It's a video. Um, that just worked. Our little mini gnat, our baby gnat works. It's slow because it's compiling twice. It's compiling the compiler, which is compiling the script and it's running it oh i didn't puts it's compiling the compiler which is then running and compiling the script which is outputting the result and the result is our fibonacci uh i guess i want to print to make it match uh which is the same result as this <sighs> okay 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 Take a, take a breath. I can compile this to a binary, uh, bin nat, and then I can, how does this work? Okay, nat, I want to run nat, examples, fib, and it works. Oh my goodness, it works. Friends, I'm going to cry. Like this is this is a year of work and it's um it's all coming together. <laughs> I'm actually going to cry. Uh, this is so cool. I just I, I just want to keep looking at this over and over again. I'm curious about the time difference. It's actually faster. I kid you not, it's actually faster. Two point two seconds versus one point six. It's not quite fifth twice, um, but it's some percentage faster, like 50% faster or something. Okay, let's let's let me recap because um, I'm I'm just I'm just in shock. I, I'm in shock. You have you ever have you ever like worked on something that you 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 didn't really fully believe in yourself. You thought you could brute force something. Um, 
and maybe you you would fail and you weren't sure if you should give up but you actually worked hard and you got there and you succeeded that's what it feels like right now yeah okay let me let me recap what we did we now have a mini nat uh right uh right here which is this mini nat script it's not the full uh, bin natalie so it can't there's a lot of stuff it can't do we can't do debugging and we can't print the ast and we can't um, compile to a standalone file very easily because we can't we don't have opt parser we don't have option parser anyway so we have this mini nat and uh, we even have a compiled version of mini nat here that accepts a file path runs that reads that file runs it through our parser uh, you saw the series uh, about the parser if you haven't you can go check it out we've been writing the parser for uh, like a month or so now I don't know how how long there were um, actually when did I start that even less than a month I think when working on that parser it runs it through the parser it runs it through the compiler that we've been working on for a year uh, creates a temp file, runs the compiler, um, which shells out to GCC, writes a file, and then we execute that with the backticks. And it works. It's actually able to compile the Fibonacci example code and run it. I'm curious if these arguments work. So if I say five, no, that doesn't work. So the arguments aren't being passed. That makes sense. So right here, um, could we fix that? Oh, I need to do, I need to do it this other way. I need this full thing. Okay, so if I put a five here, Uh huh. Five. So one dot dot negative one. Will that get me what I want? Yes. So I could do this. I could do arg v one through the end. Uh, dot join with a space. It's not going to escape things properly, but um, it's good enough for now. Now can I run, can I pass an argument to Fibonacci? Yes. Uh, is that the fifth Fibonacci number? So one, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, it is. Cool. Uh, dash C. So let's compile our mini nat. Uh, nat samples fib. Uh, we'll do the seventh number. 13. Eight. Number is 21. Ninth number is 34. Zeroth number is zero. Oh. Oh, that's so cool. I, I'm not good at showing um, how cool this is, I don't think. I, I wish I could express how cool this really is. Let's commit it. Um, add mini nat script that is self-hosted. I'm putting so many exclamation points on this. We cannot yet compile the full Ben Natalie uh, script, mostly because of option, uh, because of lack of our own option parser. 
um, and a few other little things. But we are able to compile this mini NAT script and uh, execute the Fibonacci. Let me make sure I'm spelling that right. Fibonacci. Was it two C's? Uh, one and two C's. Fibonacci example script. Yay. So to do that, why did I indent that? I don't know why I indented that. I meant to do this. Bin Natalie, bin nat examples fib rb. And let's do that. Bin Natalie. No, I don't, I don't care about that. <sighs> Friends, this is so fun. This is so neat. Um, I just can't express to you how happy I am that this works. Thank you to everyone who's encouraged me. I've gotten so many nice comments on YouTube. Whoever said YouTube comments are rude and mean. Uh, I've gotten so many nice comments from people on Twitter and YouTube and uh, direct emails. And um, I've, I've made friends uh on this platform and thank you so much for being there for me and helping me and you've uh, made suggestions and you've really rooted for me doing this and thank you um i guess that's that's all i gotta say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you this works i'm so happy merry christmas um this is like a few days this is J december 21st when i'm recording this merry christmas to you and your family happy new year uh, this is just fantastic. Thank you for being there, and thank you for hanging out with me on this spectacular and amazing evening of coding and hacking. And I hope you have your own open source project that you're hacking on, or side project, that is, and something that you find enjoyment with, and something that's a challenge, something that will challenge you. Because this certainly challenged me. Uh, and what else can I say? I hope you have something like that that you're working on and you can find some enjoyment and satisfaction in doing that and pushing yourself pushing your own boundaries and i guess that's it so thanks for hanging out i will see you in the next video